In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. The following presentation is brought to you by Candler School of Theology at Emory University. More than 2,000 years ago, a prophecy was fulfilled when a king was born into squalid surroundings. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. The birth of Jesus Christ changed history forever. He would provide for a troubled people then and millions since strength serenity, and hope. Welcome. My name is Jan Love, Dean of the Candler School of Theology. All of us here are thrilled to share this timeless story with you. You'll hear the words of the well-known Gospels of Matthew and Luke and see these six works of art created by John August Swanson. The Annunciation to Mary, The Nativity, The Shepherds, The Epiphany, The Presentation in the Temple, and finally, The Flight into Egypt. John is a renowned painter and printmaker whose works hang in some of the world's most prestigious museums. And so I have her um, feeding chickens and also um, the three angels are coming over. So see, I'm taking liberties. I don't just have Angel Gabriel, I have other archangels. The people he paints, his use of rich color, the complex detail, draw you in on many levels and convey a wide sense of diversity that's true in every sense of the word. What I find gripping, however, is his depiction of the world of Christianity. And that's why we have 50 pieces of his art here at Candler. You'll also meet some of the world's then most esteemed world, theologians and biblical scholars who contribute their understanding and insight to this glorious story. There was increasingly a sense of unrest and um, a belief that when things got really bad, that was the most likely time that God would intervene. It is at that moment with the birth of this baby that Luke has the heavens opened. John Swanson portrays the sacred in the ordinary. That's his art. With the beauty and power of sacred text and the insight of Candler scholars, we hope this presentation serves as a new catalyst for you on your journey of faith. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And that's what Luke tries to set up in this story, that in some ways the story is not about Mary, the story is about God and what God can do. Usually they show Mary and she's reading and she's all by herself. In my picture, I think of her as being part of a community. And what you see in this print is the town. And you get this sense of the expanse of life, of which Mary is an important part, but it's not, she's not a solo. She's completely incorporated into the fabric of her town. So he's trying to fit Mary's story into this ongoing story of God and God's people. But he doesn't tell it, he doesn't focus on the words of the angel to Mary and Mary's response. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? 
We don't know very much about what Mary is like because Mary appears for the first time in this story. And what we know is that she is young, that she is betrothed, but not married, uh, which would put her in a precarious position to receive an announcement that she was going to conceive a child. People who hear Mary's response to the angel would recognize, oh, this is just like Hannah. When Hannah finally was told that she was going to uh, have a child, Samuel. So the gospel writers like to pair these stories about women who uh, received news that they would give birth to significant children. The angel said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God for nothing will be impossible with God. The question of human sense of possibility and God's sense of possibility uh, meeting each other is a biblical theme that becomes a central theme for Luke in telling, in telling this story. One of the things I like so much about Swanson's art is the way in which he will include allusions to other stories, particularly those from the Old Testament. Because I think in his painting, he captures something which is very characteristic of the way the, the writers of the Old and the New Testaments um, uh, understood reality. Here's the dream of Jacob. Here's Jacob wrestling the the angel, here's uh, Adam and Eve, here's Ruth and Naomi. Things Ruth were always Eve. echoing other things. Stories were never entirely new. Instead, they echoed other stories. And so what Swanson does in his art is to give us a visual equivalent of that way of understanding, ah, I know the significance of what's happening here because I know the stories that it's like that have come before. There's one other way that Swanson brings the story of biblical women into this drawing of the Annunciation, and that's in the clothing with which Mary is dressed. There's a picture of the Tree of Life, which recalls the story of the garden in Genesis 1 and 2. And so by putting the Tree of Life on Mary, he also calls forth the story of creation and lets us think about the possibilities of new creation in this new birth. From this story, we learn who Mary is, and she is to become the mother of Jesus, but equally importantly, we see that she is this woman of incredible strong faith. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her.